What's up everybody? Josh Armijo here. I hope everybody's doing good and well and stuff. I'm here today to do something completely different. Uh, this is a video response to my very good friend and my brother uh, Sean aka Count Blagrith. Uh, he recently did a video about what records in your collection mean the most to you. Meaning they could be albums that you have been wanting for a very long time albums that you consider holy grails, albums that have sentimental value to you, and stuff around that nature. And he made that video, and of course it had a very good response and reaction to it. Many other people have been making videos about this, and uh, I'm going to do one myself personally. Um, this was a very, very hard thing to think about and just, and, 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 and just come together with, because I have... I love everything that I have. I love everything that I own in my collection, whether it be a CD, a record, or a tape. Everything has some sort of value and, and sentiment to me. But out of everything that I had in my collection, I mainly got out a stack of CDs and a stack of records to show you here in this video. Some are valuable to me in the sense of it being holy, a holy grail, and some of these have a little bit of sentimental value on a personal sort of level, which I'll explain as best as I can. I mean, this isn't going to be as introspective of a video as Sean's, but I'm not trying to make it like that. This is uh, something completely different. Um, I'm going to start with CDs first, and then uh, records. First stack of CDs are pretty much essentials that I came across at record stores. I never thought I would see them at record stores, but these are albums that I would consider to be essentials. Uh, this first CD I got at, at, at an FYE of all places, um, it was used, and it was in good conditioning, and it had to be got purchased. This is the first Revenge album, Triumph, Genocide, Antichrist, uh, 2002 Osmos Productions pressing. Of course, Jay Reed, you have Pete Helmkamp right there. The first Revenge record is just incredible, incredible stuff. And of course, we would later now know the true masterful beast that is Revenge today. Just really sensational album. Another record store find that I that I made locally was in the used section was probably my favorite Marduk album of all time, with uh, Panzer Division Marduk. Bar none, hands down, my favorite thing that Marduk have ever done. So fast, so unrelenting, so unapologetic. This is Marduk at their just straight out most maniacal. I fucking love this album so much. Uh, Baptism by Fire, uh, Christ Draping Black Metal, uh, 502, Fist Fucking God's Planet. Just some choice, choice cuts here. Uh, this is this seems to be a pretty legitimate version of it. It's only eight tracks. I've seen other versions that have like three like three or four extra tracks on here. Of course you have uh, Legion. Of course you have that on the booklet here. But yeah, I fucking love uh, Panzer Division Marduk. Some other uh, record store finds that I that I came across pretty much from a local standpoint were albums that I didn't care what versions of which they, they were. I just wanted to have them and I needed to have them. And one of the, those albums in question for me is Legion by Deicide. Uh, without question, my favorite Deicide record, their most evil, fast, blistering, despicably disgusting stuff. Uh, Dead But Dreaming, Trifiction, In Hell I Burn, even the opening title track is something worth, something very, very memorable. Uh, Satan Spawn the Caco Demon. Uh, yeah, this is pretty much my favorite Deicide album of all time, and pretty much when I saw them play Trifiction live many, many years ago. It was just an intense feeling. Of course, you have the classic Trifiction logo uh, artwork from way back in 1992. I want to say that's when this came out. Uh, yeah, 1992, I believe. Classic Deicide record. Unbelievable album. Still holds up very much so. Another essential I had to get my hands on was Impaled Nazarene's Ugra Karma. Uh, this is a uh, 1998 reissue. Of course, this is not the original cover. Of course, the original version is quite hard to, f to find and come across. Very pricey stuff, whether it be on a CD or vinyl. 
but I honestly love this alternate cover a great deal more. Uh, Tolkormt Nors 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 was an awesome album, but I feel Impaled Nazarene reached their high level peak with Uber Karma, uh, The Horny and the Horned, Soul Rape, Kali Yaga, Cyber Christ, False Jehovah, classic Impaled Nazarene, one of the best Finnish black metal bands with, with their early material and their late few albums that came after this one. Fucking love Uber Karma. And another essential album for me was something that I got through of all places Severed Records, a brutal death metal distro. Sometimes they can have some really good black metal in stock and the one black metal album I wanted from this band was pretty much what inspired me to grab a vinyl copy later on in life. I'm talking about Pure Holocaust by Immortal. This is my favorite Immortal album of all time. The best material, so fast, so crazy, pretty much immortal at their rawest and their most natural. Uh, before you would later know immortal for, for, for memes and jokes and all that stuff, Pure Holocaust was serious business. This, this was not a release that really fucked around. And uh, I'm super, super happy to have a copy of this al album. Uh, a, a sign for the Norse hordes to ride, the sun no longer rises, uh, storming through red clouds and holocaust winds. Just an amazing album. This brilliant fucking immortal album. These next couple of CDs have a little bit of a story behind them because one CD was an introduction to them for me and the other one was what eventually lead me on to becoming very great friends with these people, preferably their singer guitar player. And I'm talking about Father Be Fouled. My first introduction to them was their 2010 full-length album, Morbid Destitution of Covenant. Uh, this was released on Relapse Records. The first time I had ever listened to this and I heard the song Idle Defamation, I was just mesmerized. Because this is probably one of my all-time favorite incantation worship style bands. Very much blasphemous, old-school death metal to the T. Really low, guttural vocals, fast drumming amazing, amazing songwriting and riff work being done on here. Just an incredible album to behold. I really loved this album. And this album would later lead me on to becoming better acquainted with their vocalist, uh, Justin, whom later on in life I would find out was very good friends with Mike Seatown, of all people, which was just an, an, an amazing thing to know that they were that him and uh, Justin and Mike Seatown are, are such great friends. And... Um, Getting to know Justin and, and being within his good graces and being his friend would later on forge a really amazing friendship with him. And this would lead me on to the album that followed up, Morbid Destitution of Covenant, uh, 2012's Revulsion of Seraphic Grace. One of the best feelings in the world is whenever you read a thank you list and you see if your name gets put on there. I would never imagine somebody like myself being put on a thank you list of an album. I've been put on thank you lists before by many other great death metal bands, but I would say Father Befeld was one of the very first somewhat big death metal bands in my humble view to include me on a thank you list. And I don't know if you're able to see it well or not, but Right here in this little section, my name is on this thank you list. And as soon as I saw this, not just on the CD version, but the vinyl version, I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that they would think that they would that they would think to include me in a thank you list. And that just shows you that they love they love you not only as a person but for all the support that you've given that, that you give them over the years. And that means the world to me. I've been in... I, I, I can't thank Justin and Father Be Fouled enough for having them put me in a thank you list. It's the best feeling in the world, but when, a, it's, when it's one of your favorite fucking death metal bands, it's fucking to the moon and back. Holy shit, man. Another album that has a little bit of sentimental value to me is when you see your friends succeed. Your friends have worked so hard to put out a record, and when it's finally out and available to the masses, you can't help but feel proud for some of these, some of these people that, that are involved in, in a release to put out an album. And I'm talking about the debut album from Morgan Grau, uh, Parasitic uh, Extrinsic Pathway. Uh, Self-release through the band, um, 
later on in life they would get on to be signed with Unspeakable Axe Records. I'm very much looking forward to hearing new material. But if you haven't heard of Morgan Grau, I would highly recommend you check them out. They were another one of my favorite releases from... Uh, this was this was on my 2013 Top 10 list. Um, seriously excellent death metal. Great songwriting. Very memorable riffs. Awesome vocals. Just some incredible stuff to behold on here. The fact that this was a self-released title... Uh, and the fact that some of some pe some of these people that I consider to be some of my closest friends are involved in a release like this. Of course, you have the band members. Of course, that's my friend uh, Nick right there. And that's my good buddy Jake, who runs a really great zine called uh, Under the Sign of the Lone Star. Uh, very, very wonderful people. And I could not help but feel proud of them for reaching that high level of status by get being in a band on a release as as big as this, in my opinion. And it makes me so happy to know that I can support these guys and see them live continue to this very day. Morgan Grau are a phenomenal band and one of the best Texas metal bands going, in my opinion. And the last CD is, uh, the last set of CDs are going to lead me on into the records. And uh, I'm pretty sure if any of you have been subscribed to me for the longest time, you would know what my all-time favorite album is, what band got me into metal, and how things went on from there. And I'm talking about Cannibal Corpse's Tomb of the Mutilated. Uh, this was the very first copy of Tomb of the Mutilated that I would ever purchase. And having listened to it in high school many, many, almost, almost 10, 12 years ago, I was anxious to own a copy of it myself, and when I looked at BestBuy.com one day, just to randomly see if they had it, because I wasn't familiar with distros all that well at the time, I saw Tomb of the Mutilated there, I bought that, and I bought Butchered at Birth. So I ended up getting this 2002 reissue, of course with the current day Cannibal Corpse logo, classic bound photo on the back, but that's not all. It would only lead me on to get a vinyl version of Tomb of the Mutilated, of course, this is the black on black reissue. Uh, very nice purple vinyl here. As soon as I was able to get my hands on a vinyl version, I was extremely, extremely satisfied and happy with that. Uh, yeah. To hear Hammer Smashed Face, Icon Blood, and Post Mortal Ejaculation on a record was just a sensational feeling. It's one of my. F this is this to me personally is a prized possession because this is my favorite album of all time on vinyl. And strangely enough, later on in life, I would come across this. The first press of Cannibal Corpse's Tomb of the Mutilated on CD. With the original with the original Cannibal Corpse logo, the original back of the CD. This is the album that I value and treasure more than anything. I fucking love Tomb of the Mutilated so damn much. Now that I got one vinyl record out of the way, let's sh let me show you some more vinyl goodies. Um, yeah, this record is the the first and only album I ever paid through snail mail, because I didn't have uh, PayPal or any of the upward technologies at the time. But uh, this guy was selling some copies of his band's debut album on vinyl because he had found a, a stack of vinyl in a warehouse, and I told him I didn't have I didn't have PayPal at the time. Do you accept money order? He's like, sure, of course, send me a money order and I'll mail it out to you. And luckily, this was the only album I've ever purchased through Snail Mail. This is Exhumed with uh, Gore Metal. Uh, yeah. This is a uh, 2005 Circle of Tyrants repress. Uh, standard black vinyl. But yeah, this holds a lot to me because this is one of the very first things that I was able to acquire from a band directly. Uh, not just at a show, but just personally, you know. Uh, yeah, classic Exhumed album, the superior version of Gore Metal. I mean, I enjoyed the re-recording, but come on, you cannot beat something like Exhumed's Gore Metal. This is just so fucking phenomenal to, uh, to to listen to. And I hold this, I have great sentimental value for a release like this because I got it directly from Matt Harvey at the time. So, thanks a lot, Matt Harvey. Next is one of those albums that I needed to own, regardless of whether it was on a first press or not. I mean, I remember getting this CD for five bucks. I, I don't remember where. It was one of those Metal Mind Digipacks. But when I saw this on Nuclear War Now, I immediately had to get it. And when I had it in my hands, I was just so damn happy, guys. 
This is uh, Slaughter with Strapato. Their one and only full-length album. One of the greatest Canadian metal bands ever. One of the greatest Death Thrash hybrid releases of all time. Uh, what else can I say that hasn't already been said by Goro Stern? It's a fucking masterpiece of an album. I mean, The Incinerator, Fuck of Death, uh, One Foot in the Grave, Death Dealer. Such incredible masterpieces. I mean, I don't blame this band for having the feelings that they do about the scene and the underground and why they, why they only put out just one full-length album. I have nothing but respect for these individuals. And um, this is just a phenomenal Death Thrash record. If, I mean, this album cover is just iconic to look at. Um, if you haven't heard of um, Strapato by Slaughter, go listen to this shit. This will change your life, and this will make you appreciate underground metal a great deal more. I promise you that much. Uh, next is a metalcore album. Strange how we go from underground metal to metalcore. Uh, this is another one of those albums that I needed to, to get in some format or instance in, in a vinyl format. Because I have the CD of this, but when I saw this on vinyl, I immediately had to grab it. And um, whether or not you think it's overrated or underrated or highly praised or whatever, this album means a hell of a lot to me. This is Converge with Jane Doe. Man. The quintessential Converge record. I mean, When Forever Comes Crashing is probably one of the better Converge records, and, um, I mean, the, Jane Doe doesn't have the saddest day, because that's the quintessential Converge song, but as far as Jane Doe is concerned, Concubine, Homewrecker, Bitter and Then Some, Heaven in Her Arms, just some brilliant, brilliant stuff. Converge is one of those hardcore bands that cross the fine line between hardcore and metal. Of course, they have that early old school metalcore sort of sound. I'm going to use old school and metalcore f for this band because I feel it necessary to say so for a band like Converge. I think this is just a marvelous album. I believe this really d has held the test of time throughout the years. It really is a wonderful album to listen to and for anybody that wants to know the early stages of metalcore or, or hardcore or metal or whatever, or whatever Jane Doe by Converge is an album to be to be worth listening to. Of course, this is a Death Wish version. A Death Wish licensed by Equal Vision. Uh, yeah. Classic album. Mandatory. Since we're on the topic of core, we're going to get on to price possession territory here with this next one. I found this at my local Hogwild record store for under six bucks. And considering how much this goes for nowadays, I'm really happy to have this because apparently it's a little bit difficult to find nowadays. This is Despised Icon with the Ills of Modern Man. Uh, this, is, this was released originally on Century Media Records in 2007, and this is a vinyl version that was put up through Deep Send Records. Uh, yeah. As many of you know, I do not care for Deathcore all that much. I don't care to talk about it, I don't like being asked to review it. I don't really pay much attention to it other than maybe three or four bands tops. But Despised Icon back in the day knew exactly how to blend the worlds of both deathcore and death metal perfectly. Perfectly. What am I saying perfectly? Yeah, The Ills of Modern Man is just a damn masterpiece of an album, I would say. Um, furtive Monologue, uh, A Fractured Hand, uh, Tears of the Blameless, Oval Shaped Incisions, even fainted blue ornaments. Just some, such as just some wonderful, wonderful songs on here. Uh, of course, you have a nice little gatefold here with the additional artwork, and the vinyl itself came in really, really great conditioning. Of course, this is the clear vinyl with a yellow haze of some kind right in the middle. I'm surprised that it even plays as well as it does, and I'm happy to have made this one of my most prized possessions because I think. The asking price for this on like Discogs or something like that is probably no less than 50 bucks. But I got this for 6 bucks. So I can't complain about that. Fucking love this Despised Icon record. And I'm glad they're back too. They're, they're back. And I hope they make new stuff. Because they're going to be one of the few Deathcore bands I really truly give a shit about. 
First time purchases are going to be the, the next couple of records I show here. Uh, this first record was my very first Discogs purchase. And, of course, at the time I really didn't know the differences between Euro to US dollar conversions. Because I'm really not all that great with math sometimes. But, anyway, this was the first record I got from, from Discogs. I believe I got this all the way from Brazil, I want to say. But this, this is one of my favorite death metal albums of all time. And I'm so fucking happy to have this. This version, at least. This is Demolek with Nespith. Uh, this is the 2009 Extreme Music Repress. Uh, of course, you have one of the alternate, original alternate covers used for this. This is the cover that was used for the CD version of this. And, um, yeah. The essential Finnish death metal record. Way ahead of its time. Way ahead. Vocally, musically, lyrically. Just some incredible stuff. I mean, when the sun drank the weight of the water, the echo replacement, uh, the putrefying road in the 19th extremity, um, the planet that once used to absorb flesh in order to achieve divinity and immortality. Brilliant fucking song titles. Anti Bowman is such a fucking genius. And of course, this came on a really nice red and black splatter. Of course, you have the little baby dude in the middle here. This is such a brilliant fucking death metal record. If you ever want to know about Finnish death metal's history, start with something like this. And of course, in due time, I would later get the the 20th anniversary box set that was put out through Svart Records. Such an awesome album. I mean, it's really one of the few albums I own twice, because I really don't try to own an album on the same format twice. But Demolik is an exception for me, I guess. I fucking love Nesbeth. Um... In Count Blagarant's video, he pretty much talked about one of the first Hell's Headbangers purchases he ever made. And the record that I'm going to show you next is my first Hell's Headbangers purchase. And this means a lot to me, I would say. This is total fucking destruction with Hater. Of course, this is a grindcore band. Of course, uh, Rich Hoke from Brutal Truth plays drums in this band. Very spastic, crazy, and chaotic grindcore. Really terrific band overall. But let me tell you how I came about across this album. I was subscribed to a guy by the name of JGC Sound. Uh, really one of my main inspirations for me doing YouTube videos and talking about metal or whatever. He did a review of Hater. He gave it a perfect 10 out of 10. But then later on he did an unboxing video for uh, Hater. And it was, a it was an unboxing from Hell's Headbangers. I was watching him open, open one of those custom LP mailers that Hell's Headbangers has. And the minute I saw him do that, I thought to myself, you know what? I want it. I want what he opened in that video so I can experience it for myself. So I made the fateful decision to call Hell's Headbangers at the time because I never, I never ordered online through them before, but I basically just called them up and say, hey man, I want to order a copy of Total Fucking Destruction's Hater, the colored version. And things worked out well from there ended up getting this this wonderful vinyl version on one of the limited uh, vinyl colors sky blue translucent blue very wonderful grindcore record and uh, like I said this is the first record I ever purchased through Hell's Headbangers and this does mean a lot to me in a sense uh, personal friendships are gonna be the the basis of this next this next set of records uh, first is probably a record that, of a band that I probably never thought that I would ever own, let alone get into, but I'm super fucking happy to have it. And this record reminds me not only of the fact that this band is pretty fun, but this band also reminds me of why I have such a very strong and wonderful friendship with somebody I consider my partner in war. This is Sabaton with the album uh, Coat of Arms. Interesting story to tell you. Um, I was talking with Canyon Bickle one day, and he asked me if I had heard of the band Sabaton or if I had heard any of their material. And um, I only heard one song off of, uh, I want to say it was Carolus Rex. It was one of those bonus track covers of uh, Amon Amar's Twilight of the Thunder Gods. I heard that, but I never really dived too deep into the band's discography. So he wanted me to listen to one song off of this album. I forget what song it was in question, but he wanted me to listen to it real quick, so I did. And 
I told him I liked it, and he basically asked me for my mailing info, and I asked him what, why is that, and he had something to send me in a 12-inch box. And I was, I was excited and pumped for that, and lo and behold, it turned out to be this Sabaton record, which in a way is a fitting sort of record for him to send me, because him and I... I mean, I consider him a partner in war, just like he, uh, he considers me his ride or die. Uh, we've been to war together, uh, personally, professionally, just just so much so much going on in our in our own respective lives. But the fact that him and I can be as close as we are and remain as wonderful as friends as we are is really the most satisfying and gratifying thing humanly possible. And I can never thank Canyon enough for his love, his respect, and his friendship. He, he means the whole goddamn world to me. But but. Aside from that, Sabaton, Swedish power metal, heavy metal influenced, uh, war-themed lyrics, just a very entertaining band to listen to all the way around. They're a band that can bring the fun out of metal. They bring fun into their, their stage presences, their, their music, their songwriting, the singing. It is incredibly catchy and infectious, as is the rest of this band's body of work, because listening to this album only gave me somewhat of an incentive to listen to this band's other body of work. I mean, like stuff like The Art of War or Carolus Rex, or even the last album that they put out with Heroes. Just some really incredible stuff, and it's a fun, fun album, to, fun band to listen to. I'm really not big on power metal all that much, aside from a few bands, but I can throw Sabaton into this mix now, because they are the band that have earned a little place in my heart now. And uh, I can thank Canyon Bickle big time for getting me into a band like this, properly. So, I don't need to tell you anything else, Canyon. You already know how I feel about you. Um, yeah. Next is something that reminds me of a friendship, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. But first, let me show you the record in question. This is Gridlink with uh, the double release of Orphan and Amber Grey. This was released as a single 45 RPM LP uh, as a gatefold on a limited red vinyl. I would consider this to be a grindcore holy grail because nowadays you can't really find it, and the red version is very limited. But let me tell you the story about how I got into Gridlink and how I became aware of this band. I mean, they're one of the, they were one of the greatest contemporary grindcore bands, some of the best lyrics of any band going. Incredible drumming, incredible vocals, John Chang from Discordance Axis, Brian Fajardo, one of the best Texas drummers ever. But yeah, I'm not going to say his real name, but I was friends with a guy by the name of Noise Technician. He was a guy based out of New York. And he was very big on harsh noise, horror movies, and grindcore. Because of him, I got into bands like Noisier, harsh noise artists like Merz Bau or Masana, and um, more grindcore uh, like uh, Gridlink. I had no idea what Gridlink was at the time. Uh, listening to an album like uh, Amber Grey was just so phenomenal. Like, 11 minutes long, beautiful lyrical content, amazing vocals and production, just the total package. But then came the album that would follow that, Orphan. That album is brilliant in its own right, and it's just such a beautiful grindcore. The antithesis of what technical grindcore is and what it should be. Then a couple of years later... Um, he died suddenly. He passed away suddenly. I honestly don't know how he died, or why he died, or what would what, what, what to have been his cause of death. I know he's a very on-the-edge sort of individual. He likes really hot sauces. He likes to do some drinking every now and then. But I, won't, I really wouldn't attribute any of that to why he passed away. I honestly don't know why he died. When I found out that he died, I was gutted. It's very hard for me sometimes to deal with death because, you know, I don't really show emotions all that much. I mean, death is something very difficult, you know. But when it came to somebody that I talked to, somebody that I never met before, that really hit me hard. And um, Noise Technician, wherever you are in this afterlife, I owe you so much for getting me into such extreme grindcore and harsh noise and all that other stuff. I wouldn't have even known about these bands if it wasn't for you, man. So uh, wherever you're at in this life, rest in peace, and thank you so much for your friendship and believing in somebody like me.
and check out Gridlink while you're at it. <sighs> okay, now we're down to the last two records. We're reaching Holy Grail territory again. But only this time, it's with some on some crazy black metal here. This is Archgoat with the Light Devouring Darkness. This is the original Blasphemous Underground Productions pressing. I believe this came out in 2009, I want to say. Uh, yeah. Everybody was going crazy with the Deborah Bermorty represses, but um, I have this version, so I really have no use for it, honestly. Uh, long story short, one of my friends in, ba in a band had to part ways with some of his collection to help, you know, take care of things on the home front, which is com I completely understand, but... I appreciate that he was able to hand deliver this to me personally, and I'm very, very grateful to have this. Of course, you have a printed inner sleeve, all the band members in question here. Uh, raw black metal since 1989. This is my worship. This is my path. Seriously phenomenal stuff, guys. Such an amazing, amazing Archgoat record. Apotheosis of Lucifer, Goat in the Moon, Sodomator of the Doom Venus, Worms Born of Martyrdom. Great, great Archgoat songs to be listened to on this release, and this is really one of my prized possessions because of the rare, the rareness of it, and the fact that I got it for a relatively good price is also really awesome. And the last record I'm going to show you here is really another one of my rarest possessions. I was happy to have it at first, but then I decided to do a little bit of sleuthing, and it turned out thing that this release was a little bit more rare than I thought it was going to be. But I'm super fucking happy to have it. This is Dark Angel with Darkness Descends. Quintessential thrash metal from 1986. The great Don Dotti, the even greater Gene Hoglund. Excellent lineup here. I bought this from Vinyl Edge in Houston, Texas in 2014 when I saw Revenge live for Destroying Texas Fest. And it was in the section pretty much. It wasn't, it wasn't, you say it didn't say it was in a used section. It was just lumped in with all the metal stuff. And when I saw this there and Considering I really had no interest in getting any additional merch at Destroying Texas Fest, I wanted to get something rare. So I got this Dark Angel record, and I, from doing the research, looking things up, I believe I have the promo version of this. This is the album that was not meant to be sold to the public. And, um, yeah, man. It's a, little, it's a bit of a flimsy little record, but it can play really well here. I mean, listening to this for the first time with uh, Death is Certain, Life is Not, it was just an awesome, awesome experience. And it's awesome to hear that this record can, can still sound good all these decades later. And uh, this is one of the greatest thrash metal records of all time. Undisputed classic of the genre. So yeah, Dark Angel, Darkness Descends. Yeah, there we go. I'm pretty sure you can hear some thunder and rain going on here, so I'm going to cut it off here before anything gets even crazier here. So, uh, thank you, Sean, for making that video. I will link you the original video, and I will link you selected links to some of the bands I talked about in this video. Do you have any favorite releases that mean a lot to you in your collection? Definitely talk about it. See Sean's video. Form your own opinion. We can go from there. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for checking out my channel. And until the next time, Armio out.